Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Actor Robert Mitchum was the original Hollywood bad boy, a rough-and-tumble young actor who was even busted for marijuana, an unforgivable sin in an era when movie studios were hyper-protective of stars' images. It's now fairly standard for handsome up-and-coming actors to cultivate an air of rebellion and danger, hoping to be perceived as the next James Dean, Marlon Brando or Steve McQueen, but Mitchum fit the description years before those kids came along. How Robert Mitchum committed an unforgivable sin in his era. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. The only difference between me and my fellow actors is that I've spent more time in jail. When you think of the great classic Hollywood tough guys, the names Humphrey Bogart, James Cagney and Edward G. Robinson are often the first thing that come to mind. But off screen, the legends couldn't have been more different than their big screen counterparts. Robinson was an art collector, Cagney was a teetotaler and Bogart was a Shakespeare quoting chess enthusiast. But when it comes to the life of classic Hollywood tough guy Robert Mitchum, well, it reads very much like a Robert Mitchum movie, rugged, rebellious and thoroughly irresistible. In the 1950s, Robert Mitchum was the Hollywood heartthrob and his rugged good looks and charming indifference made women across the country swoon, yet beneath his roguish exterior was a troubled man prone to cruel betrayals, salacious scandals and infamous acts. He was a fighter and a drunk who didn't seem to care who he offended. In trouble with the law from a young age, Mitchum was known for his lifelong contempt for authority figures. However, the first man to tell the public he didn't care and became loved anyway was the one and only Robert Mitchum. His sleepy-eyed heartthrob style contrasted with leading men like Steve McQueen and Marlon Brando, who took themselves and their careers very seriously. The silver-tongued Mitchum didn't care for celebrity culture or the adulation that came with fame and fortune. As he put it, I have two styles of acting, with or without a horse. He exemplified cool before society even understood what the word meant. He also fared pretty well as an actor. The American Film Institute ranked him 23rd of the 50 greatest American screen legends. He was a great actor, scary when he played the villain, inspiring when he played the hero. First rate all the time. He's definitely one of the greatest movie stars of all time, along with such legends as Kirk Douglas, Charlton Heston, John Wayne and Burt Lancaster. Mitchum had the most piercing eyes. It was as if they could see right through you. But Mitchum wasn't only a very talented actor, he also released some good records as well. The movie Thunder Road 1958 is proof of Mitchum's many skills. In the classic drama crime film, he acted, directed, co-wrote, wrote wrote the title song and sang it as well. But there's also another side of Mitchum that not everyone knows about. Beneath his good looks and charming exterior was a tormented and troubled mind that experienced many scandals and tragedies. Very much the bad boy on and off the screen, Robert Mitchum's rough and tumble personal life was every bit as real as his on-screen bad boys. He was born into hardship, and on August 6, 1917, in Bridgeport, Connecticut, he was trouble from day one. He was born into a traditional American working-class family. His father, James Thomas Mitchum, was of Irish descent and worked on the shipyard and on the railroad. He was one of those people who literally built the country. Robert's mother was an immigrant from Norway, bearing the Scandinavian-sounding name Anne Gunderson. At the age of two, his father was killed in a rail yard accident. Over many years after her husband's passing, Anne had to raise Robert and his siblings single-handedly. But then his mother married Major Hugh Cunningham Morris, a former Royal Naval Reserve. The British officer became Robert's stepfather, but he was sent to live with his grandparents aged 12. He was also expelled from several high schools. He often had disputes with the authorities at the school, once he even got into a fist fight with his school principal. After being moved around to several different places, he moved in with his older sister in New York's infamous Hell's Kitchen district. After a childhood full of fights and mischief, 
Mitchum hopped on a railroad car and became a vagabond. He took whatever work he could find, including ditch digging and boxing. Eventually he was arrested for vagrancy and put on a chain gang. According to Mitchum, he escaped, hitching a ride on the railroads to California. He became a wild boy of the road, travelling through Depression-era America. For all that he was a handsome, winsome Hollywood star, Mitchum was a one-woman kind of guy, sort of. Back in Delaware, Robert met the love of his life, Dorothy. He was practically addicted to Dorothy and proposed to her soon after they started going steady. His proposal was legendarily bad. According to the actor himself, the night he asked her to marry him, I took one look at her and said, This is it. I'll be back for you. Stick with me, kid, and you'll be farting through silk. She lived next door to his grandparents and the couple married in 1940. Robert and Dorothy Mitchum would stay married all of their lives. With his rugged good looks and patented demeanour of ennui, Mitchum was quite the hit with the ladies. He must have had a monk's self-control then to remain faithful to his wife, right? Wrong and wrong. Mitchum carried on many affairs during his marriage to Dorothy Spence, but there was always one thing she could hold over his head. After the wedding, Robert and Dorothy moved to California, where Robert had gained a foothold in the entertainment industry. Before that, he had made a living as a coal miner and semi-professional boxer. When the couple's first son, James, was born, Mitchum realised he needed steady employment. During World War II, he worked as a machine operator for Lockheed Aircraft Corporation, but unfortunately he damaged his hearing at work due to the constant loud sound from the machines. Robert also suffered a nervous breakdown due to job stress, causing him temporary blindness. Maybe it was then that he realised he wasn't made for a regular 9-to-5 job. In any case, Robert began to look for a way back into the film industry. He worked as an extra and supported actors in several productions. His major breakthrough, however, came as a soldier in the American war film The Story of G.I. Joe. During the 50s and 60s, he became hugely popular after several starring roles in classic film noirs. He was sometimes referred to as the soul of film noir. The audience loved him as the smooth, drawling, nonchalant anti-hero hero with sleepy eyes. He was awesome no matter what type of character he played. And by the way, his sleepy eyes wasn't a gimmick. It was due to chronic insomnia and an injury he got during a boxing match that caused astigmatism in both eyes. Simply put, Robert understood that you didn't have to roar like a lion to gain respect. Today, Mitchum is most famous for his chilling role in the film noir classic The Night of the Hunter, where he plays an evil convict posing as a preacher. Mitchum was desperate for the part, and he nailed his audition in the best way. When director Charles Lawton met with the actor, he said he was looking for a diabolical shit, to which Mitchum answered, Present! I wanted to take it all the way, he said. I wanted to scare people to death. The book did that. It was ten times as frightening as the picture, but Charles had such good taste. He kept saying, I make my living reading the Bible. I can't do this sort of thing. As it was, it was pretty good, I guess. The movie is considered one of the greatest films in Hollywood history. As it happened, Robert's on-screen bad boy wasn't too far away from his rough personal life. Despite a Hall of Fame career, Mitchum always seemed to find some diversion or distraction that kept him away from Hollywood. Some interruptions, like being drafted into World War II, were entirely out of his control. In 1948, Mitchum saw his first Hollywood scandal, when he was arrested for possession of marijuana. A big deal at that time, even though he was a known marijuana user, so it really was only a matter of time before the cops caught up to him. Sure enough, a narcotics agent did just that on September 1st, 1948. Mitchum's career was flying high, having hit his stride with a string of critically acclaimed film noirs like Crossfire and Out of the Past. He was visiting friends at the home of Hollywood starlet Lila Leeds when the police raided the house, arresting Mitchum, Leeds and two others. Mitchum knew that possession of an illegal substance was sure to ruin his acting career, and hinted as much when he responded to the cop's questions of his name, age and occupation with former actor. 
He was sentenced to 43 days on a prison farm, where photographs from Life magazine found a laconic, relaxed, smiling inmate. I like jail, he told them, comparing it to Palm Springs, but without all the riffraff. Not only would Mitchum's career survive the scandal, it also made him an even bigger box office draw. A scandal like that would have sunk most celebrities back in those days. For Mitchum it only emboldened his popularity. The conviction was stricken from his record due to improper police work. The only effect that I ever noticed from smoking marijuana was a sort of mild sedative, a release of tension when I was overworking. It never made me boisterous or quarrelsome. If anything, it calmed me and reduced my activity, he later explained. During the Depression, like so many young men his age, Mitchum volunteered for FDR's Civilian Conservation Corps. In 1936, he was assigned to work the forests outside of Chino, California. Hard, laborious work. At night, for a little R&R, &R, the camp held amateur boxing fights and, a shock to no one, I'm sure, Mitchum was good. Very good. So good, in fact, that he ended up travelling around with a semi-pro boxing circuit in California for $25 a fight. Hollywood might very well have been robbed of Mitchum had he not broken his nose badly when fighting a middleweight. He quickly retired from the ring. Of course, Mitchum, with his lizard-lidded eyes, had a very hot temper at times. John Wayne and Lauren Bacall star in Blood Alley, but the role was initially Mitchum's. The film was a project of Wayne's production company, Batjack, and Wayne eagerly signed on Mitchum. There were the obligatory interviews with the press, some of which show Mitchum dressed in costume for the film. Things grew particularly heated during the filming, when Mitchum's bad boy aura kicked in at full speed. Mitchum, who didn't mind a whiskey or two, showed up on the set after a long night out. According to reports, the famous actor had an outburst and smashed the studio, all because there was no car prepared for him on set. The former boxer then turned to the movie's transportation manager, confronted him, and threw the guy into the nearby San Francisco Bay. It all ended with Robert being fired from the production, and producer John Wayne being forced to jump in and take over Mitchum's role. Mitchum was a big drinker. Actor Jack Hawkins, who worked with Mitchum in the 1963 film Rampage, revealed his rebellious colleague's hazardous ritual on set. According to Hawkins, Mitchum drank 49 glasses of rum before dinner, while on the set. How he managed to do his job after that amount of liquor is beyond us, but Mitchum had naturalistic skills and could live on his talent alone. Clearly, though, Mitchum didn't have a lot of respect for actors who viewed the profession as challenging and hard work. This is not a tough job. You read a script. If you like the part and the money is OK, you do it. Then you remember your lines. You show up on time. You do what the director tells you to do. When you finish, you rest and then go on to the next part. That's it, Mitchum said. It's safe to say that Mitchum had a very relaxed attitude to his profession. A quick look at some of his quotes gives a pretty good idea about the person behind that curling serpent smile. Listen. I got three expressions, looking left, looking right, and looking straight ahead," Mitchum said when explaining his acting style. Here's another classic from Mr. Trouble himself. People think I have an interesting walk. Hell, I'm just trying to hold my gut in. Among colleagues, Mitchum was known for using a secret code with scripts. His co-actors often noted that Mitchum wrote down the note NAR on his scripts and that apparently meant no action required. Mitchum's way of reminding himself to experience the world of the story without acting upon it. Although he received rave reviews from critics on a regular basis, he never paid them much attention. In his mind, I never will believe there is such a thing as a great actor. After all, he never finished his formal education, acting or otherwise. As far as he was concerned, taking acting lessons is like going to school to learn to be tall. As you can probably tell, the man's wit was second to none, and a huge part of his popularity. Add that to his good looks and humble pie attitude, Mitchum embodied a type of celebrity no one had experienced before. In 1948, such a blasé approach was unheard of. For a while, it looked like I was going to be stuck in westerns. I figured out I could make six a year for sixty years and then retire. I decided I didn't want it. 
so I started blinking my eyes every time a gun went off in the scenes. That got me out of westerns. Nevertheless, Mitchum said it and people embraced his counterculture attitude. A few more gems like I agree with the producer who said I looked like a shark with a broken nose, and another like when you're successful in the movies, Hollywood doesn't let you do better. They just let you do more. And his legend status was sealed. Mitchum had been suffering from emphysema and was diagnosed in spring with lung cancer. He died in his sleep at his home. He was 79. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new here. And if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Robert Mitchum? His roles as a cool, cynical loner, combined with a notorious personal life and a sardonic, relaxed style to create a durable screen image as a fatalistic tough guy.